Welcome to Kitty Talks. We share inspirational life stories that empower you to create yours. And today I have with me the beautiful Dana Malstaff. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. And where are whereabouts in America are you, Dana? I don't know. I'm in Southern California, so I'm in San Diego. Oh, wow. Beautiful. So is it nice and hot for you at the moment? It's pretty warm, although, you know, it, it gets in the spring, it gets hot during the day at like about 80 um Fahrenheit and then it gets cold at night and then and we which is not cold compared to most places but we think it's cold so (laughs) yes um, and I would remind you that I'm from England so (laughs) we we know what cold and rainy is um but for those of you that don't know uh, Dana is the creator of the boss mum movement she's a business and content strategist and she empowers women to raise and nurture a business and a family at the same time so Dana thank you so much for joining us today yeah, I'm I'm very excited to be here. I love, I mean, just like I know you and everybody that you interview, we love talking about what we're passionate about. So yes, and that's exactly it. We love having people on who are totally in their passion zone, who are kind of just following their intuition and passion and purpose and doing what lights them up. And you are a really wonderful example of that. So I'd love for you to tell the audience just a little bit about your business and what you're doing at the moment. Sure. So um, the business is actually called Boss Mom. So we're, uh, <laughs> I wrote a book called Boss Mom, The Ultimate Guide to Raising a Business and Nurturing Your Family Like a Pro. Uh, gosh, September of 2014? 15. No, 15, 15. Sorry, all the years of, are <laughs> meshing together now. And uh, I had had a business before that. I was a content and business strategist. So I help people uh, basically create content that fits really nice with what they do in their business. So they create passive income and, uh, and grow and scale their businesses. Uh, but that was, it's hard to sell your services. You're always just out there selling you. So it's hard to really build a brand when, when that is it. So uh, uh, basically I decided to write the book because I had my, I got pregnant with my son and started my entrepreneurial journey like in the same weekend, basically. <laughs> yeah, so I uh, quit my job. Yeah. And at my going away party, uh, everybody went out and, you know, everybody had drinks and I was, the next thing I know I got pregnant. So, <laughs> which I joke, my husband's always like, that's way too much information. I was like, we're all adults here. It's perfectly fine. We cannot handle it. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think, so this is something interesting is my, you know, when I was in corporate America, I was at a director level. I had a team of 11 people under me and I worked like 14 hour days. We didn't have kids and we traveled and we had this life that seemed really, really cool, but I was massively overworked. Yeah. Um, and, and in a lot of ways, uh, not using my gifts, um, I was, you know, not given the right, kind, like my team was amazing, but we all weren't given all the right resources and not, not because it was the business's fault, but because in some ways I hadn't really grown into who I was and who, yeah. what my capabilities are. We hadn't really gone and searched that out like we should have. Um, you know, and so when I, when I decided to quit, I think my body said, oh, oh, there's some space. We should have a baby. <laughs> what was it that made you decide to quit? Like, was what was it the lead up to those at that event? Yeah. So, uh, the organization I was in was a smaller company that was growing rapidly, uh, and they basically had a situation where um, the, the the CEO and the CMO um, had a complete split. So basically, everybody who the marketing um, you know manager who had hired me came on. They were kind of doing this sweep which often happens in businesses, right? Mm -hmm. And for anybody that's that's happened to you and you get angry, don't because uh, that's kind of, that's that's generally the way it works. If somebody's going to come in, you want to bring in your team, bring in your people. So it generally has nothing to do with you and everything to do with the people at that level feel comfortable with people that they know and and have brought in. So I could see that that was happening because I've worked for a lot of small companies that have gone under, that have grown, that have everything that you could think of a small company could do. And so I proactively went to... um, you know, went to the person that was, they just brought on. And I just said, Hey, like I've been, I've, I've seen these situations before. Um, and I want to make sure my team's taken care of. Uh, I'd like to actually just resign, but I want a 90 day structure. So we both know like what's happening. So there's no, uh, it just, there's something that's seamless. 
So I was taking a situation that could have been, you know, bad. I could have taken it a wrong way and said, Hey, I'm going to use this as an opportunity. Um, and him and I are actually still, uh, connected today. Uh, because in that situation, you know, it's, they look at somebody and say, Oh yes, I do want to bring in somebody that's, that I, it's, you know, sort of my team. Um, but I respect the fact that you've come to me and we're going to make this a really nice, smooth transition. So we did that. And I, and I said, you know what, to my husband, I was like, there's, I'm going to go out and there's one company in this, we were living in Columbus, Ohio at the time. I was like, there's one company I would work for. Uh, I'm going to go interview. Um, and if I get that job, then I'm going to stay working for people. I was like, if I don't get that job, then we're going to take that as a sign that I need to start my own business. <laughs> and he's like, okay, let's, let's do that. And we didn't have kids. We had this space. And so it's, it's funny now that I talk about, you know, Hey, let's be moms and entrepreneurs. Like I started my entrepreneurial journey before I had kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so it just depends on where you are in that, in that space. But I basically went out, I interviewed this job and I, I got to the very last one and they, you know, where it was just me and one guy and they called me up and they were like, he had this experience that you didn't have. We really loved you and wish that we could work with you. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but we, but we need to give him this position. And, and that's when it like clicked in my brain. And I was like, Oh, they could work with me if they didn't hire me. And I was just a consultant. And it just opened up this whole, for some reason, it was that like block in your brain. Where you, where you think you have to have these full-time positions and then you recognize, yes, there is the stress and the risk of having your own business, but it also means everybody that you want to work with could hire you because it's so much more accessible to hire a consultant than it is to hire a full-time employee. And our economy nowadays, especially, I mean, here in America, at least, we're absolutely moving that way. There are so many more businesses that are uh, hiring projects you know, hiring within a project. So, so that's so it's like this world that's opening up to people who want to have their own businesses to not, not have to work for the same person. They can own their own business, but to go. So it, it just opened my mind to this whole space and I went, yeah, let's do this. I'm going to have my own business. And, um, and then that's where it started it was basically about six months of me going through morning sickness and also trying to figure out what on earth me going out on my own in air quotes meant, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, great, I'm going to go out on my own. And I'm, I'm going to do these things. And I was like, wait, what am I going to call myself? And what, are, what's my website going to look like? And how am I going to build that? And like, who am I going to get, you know, how is my sales process going to work? And, you know, what's my slide deck going to be? And so that was that, that journey of the first six months of figuring out what on earth I was even really doing. Um, and that discovery, which of course I came home and I told my husband, I was like, yep, I'm going to do this in 30 days. It'll be great. I'll just have all these clients. And then of course you get into that self-discovery of trying to figure out what your brand is and who you are. And you go down that rabbit hole and then you realize 30 days is not enough time to do anything <laughs> of great significance in your business. But how did that, I, it's not what I thought you were going to say, actually. I thought you were going to say almost like the universe made the decision for you because if you got pregnant, at this literally the same time as, as leaving your job, it was almost like the universe was saying, uh-uh, we've got, we've got a different idea for you. You're not going to take a full-time job. You're going to do something different. Oh, I'm sure the universe has plans. I, I am a big believer, though, that the that I um, that that the universe, you know, responds to what you tell it. Yeah. Um, so I'm a big believer in verbalizing what you want because the universe is going to do what it's going to do with you or without you. So either you tell it what it wants, so it helps it direct its flow, so mm-hmm. it can keep okay. you in mind when it's doing things. Uh, and if you keep your mouth shut, then it's going to do what it's going to do, and you're going to be dealt whatever hand. So, uh, when I was pregnant, I would like get up in the morning and verbally say my labor plan, you know, every morning would be like, this is how I see it going down universe. I would like for you to, uh, to go. And I am actually even, you know, it's so funny because people tell me like, I'm, I'm actually, I'm Catholic. So I'm a religious, you know, person per se. (laughs) And, uh, but I believe both, both co coexist, like me going out and, and asking the universe to call to me is saying that I believe certain things have been set in place. And I recognize that things move in the way they do and the universe works in the way it does. So, um, it's so interesting. Cause I have a, I have a, a, a lot of people that ask me that, they're like, you talk a lot about the universe. And they're like, but you're also religious. And I was like, yep, both those things. It's and out of cool. interest, did the birthing plan come out how, how you requested or? Yeah, actually. So this is the funny part with my son, with my son, a hundred percent. Like I had both my kids very close to when they were due. Um, everything, my daughter actually came out. Uh, the universe did exactly what I asked it to, but I also was not specific enough. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. so I had said, this is how I want the birthing plan to happen. And 
she actually, it came, it happened that, that very similar way. Uh, but she, it happened so quickly that she actually came out too quick when, so the, the fluid wasn't able to leave her lungs, which is a, a, something called transitioning. So when you have the baby, it happens a lot with women who have C-sections. Yeah. And, um, and so she ended up having to go to the, to the NICU, which is where babies that have to like get oxygen and have the little IV and stuff for two days so they could get all the fluid out of her lungs and everything. So it, it wasn't perfectly as planned, but the actual, the, the process was exactly what I asked for. And it was a really good lesson to be much more specific about what you want. <laughs> if there's any more children, then you will uh, be very... Oh my God, no more, no more. Two is, two is plenty. I've got two hands, two babies. That's all I can handle. <laughs> Perfect. And when did the idea um, for Boss Mum, like where did that come from in the kind of series of synchronicities that happened to you? Yeah. So I think from the day I found out I was pregnant and, and was also having my own business, I think, or even just the day I was pregnant, whether I had been in corporate America or not, um, I think I always knew I didn't want to ever be a stay-at-home mom, but I also thought maybe I'll try, you know, maybe I'll see how that goes. Um, and it was, it didn't take very long at all for me to recognize that I'm a better parent when I'm not around my child 24 hours a day. Uh, and there are some women who just do that beautifully. They, they, I just did an episode about running your business like a home and there are, sorry, running your home like a business. And there are so many women who just do that wonderfully. And I am not like that at all. I want to, I want to have, you know, like go out and just be chaotic with my children and, you know, build tents and have adventures and this idea of being the regimented person that, you know, also has to teach them everything. And every single day we're together as if they were my employee does not, does not sound fun to me. <laughs> and there was a lot of turmoil of that because it meant that I'm, do I not love my kids enough? Am I not a good enough parent? Mm. If I want to be an entrepreneur, does that mean I love my business more? Uh, you know, what, what does that mean? And there was a lot of, of guilt that just came, came with that process of trying to figure that out. And, and honestly, even though there were thousands and thousands and maybe even millions of moms out there who felt that at that same moment, who have felt that at some time, if I felt very isolated because it was something you didn't want to share. You know, it was like this dirty secret you didn't want to tell people that I don't want to be a stay-at-home mom and I kind of want my kids to go to daycare so I can work on my business. Oh no, am I a bad mom? So many, there were women in my neighborhood that were probably feeling that, but none of us knew it because nobody was talking about it. And so I just went along, you know, with my journey, continuing to feel that way. We moved uh, from Columbus, Ohio to California, where I'm originally from, to be uh, closer to my parents. Uh, and that's where I was just opened up to a more entrepreneurial space. San Diego is in Southern California, it's very entrepreneurial. And, and as I started going through this process, I got invited to a mastermind. Um, through some people that I had met. And it just so happens that one of the people in that group was uh, or is a book coach. And he, um, Azul Toronis is his name. And he actually helped write uh, or was on the writing team with Pat Flynn for his Will It Fly book uh, about a year after he, he helped me. And we were in this mastermind group and he said, hey, I, um, I want to uh, I want to give you guys this great deal if anybody wants to write a book, it's available. And I was like, yes, I was a journalism major. I've always wanted to write a book. And when we sat down to do the mind mapping and I was like, I'm going to write a book about content strategy and it's going to be great. Uh, what really happened was all these trends seeing about guilt and fear um, and, you know, this disconnection between our businesses and our families and, and this feeling that I had that I didn't like that everybody turns everything off when they get home as if their, their kids don't know what work is. And it's this negative word and work to children is my parents are leaving me to do this other thing. And in my, my mind, I wanted to say, there's got to be some way that, that we connect, that our kids connect with that. So they can feel like they're a part of it, as opposed to feeling like it's this other thing that sort of they're pitted against. And, and that's where Boss Mom was born. We started mapping it out. I, I went out to a couple communities I was connected with because I didn't have a community of my own at the time. And I, you know, went in and said, hey, I have this idea. Like, what do you guys think? And it was crazy. Like women were like, yes, where is this? Where can I hang out with you? Where can I join? Where can I read it? And then we did brainstorming on the name and we, one of the name options was boss mom and everybody came back and was like, done and done. That's your name. And so we immediately started the trademark process and like, and you know, like any entrepreneur, I was like, well, then we should have a podcast and we should have group coaching programs and we should <laughs> like, what else can we slap boss mom on and like make it our own? And, uh, and that's kind of how it was born. And we've been like fanning the flame 
ever since. Yeah, and I and I personally think it's it's totally wonderful because I think like women are in this we're in this space now where we you know, the feminine is rising to meet the masculine and we're you know taking our rightful place on earth. But in the meantime, we've made our life probably a bit more difficult because we're still like the primary care holders and now we're kind of bringing in money um and I love what you're doing like I listen to your podcast and I like I, I'm a step mum but I'm not a mum mum yet and I feel like by listening to your podcast I'm kind of getting the jump on everything I need to know you know already um but yeah I think we're in this weird and wonderful place where at the moment our lives are quite difficult because we're we're like mums we're boss mums you know, and we're kind of doing so many things. Like, how do we do all of that? We've never really been in this. Our generation has never been in this space before. So we have to help one another. Yeah. What's funny is, uh, and I, I feel like, I'm, I'm sure there are men that are like this, but I feel like women are more so, um, is that we think we have to do all of those things. You know, we think that we have to, everything has to be done by us. Everything has to be organized by us. Everything has to be planned by us. Everything has to be executed by us. Mm -hmm. And I think the most beautiful thing about what we talk about in this community and the reason that it's a community is that, that no, like being an island is not actually fun. It's very isolating. So when you wake up in the morning, you, you think you have to do all of these things on your own. You don't, you need to go out and reach out. And so you know, there's a lot of this idea that we become solopreneurs, but we need to be actually CEOs of our own businesses. Yeah. And the best way to build, to build a successful business that, that you are also happy in is to not be the one that does everything. Yeah. And that's really, really hard for us. It's almost as if we don't trust that other people will do it as well as us or will think as well as we do about that thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, that's that space. That almost that's like the biggest thing that we have to get through. It's not that we can teach somebody or do something or charge something or make money or, you know, build something or whatever it is that we think is that fear. It's that fear that I have to be able to hand something off to somebody and I have to be able to trust that they're going to come back and do something that's, that really speaks to my brand and who I am and what, what I'm trying to accomplish. And, and like letting that go, like for us, letting that go, being like, Hey, husband, I need some help in these spaces and letting him do that. Even if it, at first doesn't seem exactly the way I would want it. It's that process that one, gives us clarity in what we want and what we do, but two, just you have to have people around you to do those things. So I like, you know, when we got on the phone, you're like, oh, my assistant does this. And my, yeah. you know, these people on my team do these different things. Like in our family and our businesses, we have to have those support systems or it's just, it's just impossible to do because you can't do all the things. No, and we were, we were chatting before we came on, weren't we, saying that I think the key thing is for women is to really find out what they enjoy and what they love and stay in their, like, genius zone. And like you said, you know, build a team of people around you that doing the bits that they love that all interconnects mm -hmm. with the bits that you love. <laughs> yeah, well, and the more and more you get into business, mm -hmm. um, the more, the more, like, niche down that actually becomes. So to give a good example, we have a, I do a lot of content creation. I have about 9,000 students over various platforms and content creation has been something I've done for a long time. I did it in corporate America. You know, it's just something that I do. However, I used to do all of it. I used to create the PowerPoint slides and create this and, you know, do all the workbooks and do those kinds of things. Well, first, you know, I brought, um, at the end of last year, we brought, I brought a designer on retainer. So now I'm like, okay, great. Now I can sketch out workbooks and she can do those kinds of things. But I'm still writing all the content, doing all those things. And it was becoming stressful for me. And so even though it's something I can do and I can do well, actually. Um, so I, you know, finally found somebody who was actually, she was my social media manager that said, hey, I've got these extra hours. Do you have anybody that you might be able to connect me with? And I was like, let's try something. Just go and do an audit of this course and tell me what you think and give me your ideas. And she came back with these great ideas. And she said, you know what I'd really love to do? I would love to make your templates for your PowerPoints and make the actual PowerPoints. And then I'd love to do all this. So all you have to do is hit record and then, you know, which is what you do really well. And I was, and, and this thing went off in my brain that was like, I feel like, I feel, I feel like I might be in love with you. Is what I told her. <laughs> because what happened is I, the thing that I was good at now that my business has grown and I'm becoming more and more the actual CEO of my business, I can't even do those things. It has to be my brain and not just the fact that I can do those things. So you kind of up the level of what you hand off. You up the level of what you hand off until what happens is you literally become the person that's delegating. You become the person that, that you know, helps to foster ideas mm -hmm. and you recognize, which is what I love about the whole biz, boss mom movement and brand 
is that our job is not to be just this, this standalone expert with these ideas. Our job is to foster ideas. Mm-hmm. You know, our job is to connect people and to grow things and to nurture things that, that it requires us to be conscious of us being outside ourselves. It requires us to recognize the ripple effect we have on other people. And it requires us to actually grow other people within our organization so that they can in turn grow other people. And we can all grow, you know, outside of that amazing children so that we actually are helping the economy, not just by stimulating it through money, but by stimulating it through making better, more connected, more empowered people. Mm, beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you're, you're preaching to the converted because I think we were also talking before and I was saying my background was talent, you know, and so many people and companies could not get it through their head that, you know, employ the, or bring in the best possible people you can into your organization. And that just pushes you higher. Um, and especially when you're running a business, you know, you need to have the space to be able to see you know, where, and have those creative ideas. And if you're kind of bogged down and you're in your business, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember in, um, back in, in corporate America, which I feel like I wish there's a better term for it than corporate America. <laughs> but back when I wasn't my own boss, I guess, um, I, I remember them saying that somebody telling me, they're like, why would you do something nice for this person? Like, why would you take them out to lunch to thank them for doing their job? They're already getting a paycheck. And I was like, mm, okay, let me explain to you. Uh, the paycheck only requires them to do the minimal of what we ask them to do. Like nobody has to go in above and beyond for their paycheck. They go in above and beyond because they know that you appreciate them. They feel valued. They feel connected. They feel like part of what you're creating. All and they, all of those things help people to work harder for you and they bring their best ideas to you as opposed to just doing what the job description had. I want those people in my corner. And if I want those people in my corner, that means... I don't care if they're just doing their job. I'm celebrating them when they're doing their job so that they do their job better, so that they want to do their job better. Like anybody who says, oh, they've got their paycheck, that's enough. Uh, obviously, it doesn't get, you know, what drives people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I would echo what you said at the beginning, actually. I think there's a real, um, especially here in the UK as well, there's this beautiful new paradigm that people are creating businesses. Everyone's sort of self-employed and everyone's joining up and helping one another. And they're all doing, staying in their kind of genius zones, but we all, you know, can create businesses that work for us and our families because we're doing yeah. Non-stop. I love it because I don't I don't have any full time employees. No. I'm I'm technically like a a sole owned LLC here in, in in the states, and and basically I have nine or ten, um, depending on what you would include. Like actually eleven if you just include my lawyer and a couple other people um, on my team that I pay on a consistent monthly basis uh, to do what they do. But they all have their own businesses. Yes. So I love it because I feel like I have a business with a team and they consider themselves to be part of my brand and part of my team and they go out and promote me and can, you know, we're all connected. Uh, but, but they also have other things. Yeah. So I love it. It's because, you know, so we don't, we don't just, just connect with one thing. Like it gives us the space to connect on multiple levels with multiple things. And it empowers us to actually build what we want and do what we want and go in directions that we want and feel connected to people, but also to not feel beholden to people that they're the only option. You know, if when someone, I remember I wanted to to do something else, you know, I wasn't happy. And my dad said, well, do something else, quit your job and do something else. And I remember telling him at 23, no, I can't, like, I can't. And he's like, well, that's a ridiculous answer. And I'm, and he basically told me, I'm not going to continue this conversation until you switch the way you're thinking, because that's dumb. (laughs) And it, and it was because we do always have a choice, but I feel like when we, our paycheck comes from the same person for the person that's entrepreneurial yeah. and the paycheck comes from the same person, that's what we, we kind of go, oh, well, I have to do what they want because I need that paycheck. And when we, we take get step out of that, when we own our own business, then all of a sudden we go, oh, I get to choose who I work with. I get to choose what I do. And I'll, I'll tell you, I feel like it's a love fest with my clients. Mm. Like it's almost, I almost feel like I'm in some like weird alternate universe where like clients, clients who pay me, send me boxes of thank you gifts. And I'm like, I'm, I'm confused. I feel like I should be sending you boxes of thank you gifts because, which I do because you're, you're paying me to like do it. And they're like, no, but you helped me do these things. And we box for each other. And we're like, I just wanted to tell you, I heart your face because I heard you mention me on this podcast and do this thing. And, but that's because we only, like, I only work with people that I would actually want to hang out with. 
Because yeah. as this reality check for me, I all of a sudden went, oh, wait, I have to hang out with my clients a lot. Mm. So maybe I should pick people and they should pick me based on not just me being able to help them in their business, but a personality connection and some way that we connect. And we connect on mom, the mom level, but we connect on a lot of other ways as well. And that, like when that went off in my brain, all of a sudden me feeling guilty if my son got sick and needing to go pick him up and, and the client being like, well, I really also kind of needed that. Like I get you need to take your, your son to the hospital, but you kind of need to deliver this to me to being like, oh my gosh, get off the phone, go yes. take care of your son. Don't even worry about it. I'll get with, you know, your assistant and will get me on the calendar for, you know, sometime later this week or something. And, and then following up and being like, I hope everything's okay. Give me an update. Like the difference between those two, and I'm, I'm giving the same service, but the difference between those two is the, is the ultimate difference between my happiness when I wake up every day is I only work with people that I love. And then I only want people to work with me when they love. And the second we feel like maybe that connection isn't there, or the second I feel like I've helped them as much as I can, then, then you set them free like a butterfly to go find, <laughs> find something else that's going to really fit for them. Yeah. And I think that's like, that's been the key to me being able to grow my business as much as I have is I'm actually happy doing it. Yeah. And you kind of push, you're resonating that and people are picking up on that because like you said, you know, you're putting it out in the world and that's what people are uh, attracted to because they want to be the same way and they want to feel the same way. So why not? Yeah. When I, I, when I get on calls, I call it speed dating for your business. I'll be like, okay, so this call is kind of like speed dating for your business. And I'm going to ask you questions about your business and you're going to, you know, tell me, and if we don't laugh, then that's a good sign that maybe we're not a good fit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, We'll see, like, do we want to go on a sec, you know, another business okay. date? And if so, then we'll we'll schedule that. And at the end of that, we like want to change our Facebook status together. Then we'll, you know, <laughs> then we'll talk about what what that looks like and what that might be. And it's a really good analogy, I think, because business is relationships. We think that businesses is services and businesses is products and businesses is what you sell and your revenue and your bottom line, but it's not. Businesses is it's not just people, it's relationships. I mean, entire million billion dollar deals are built off of trust and relationships and connections. Yeah. And that happens by making inside jokes and connecting. Like the reason people in court, you know, in large corporate America give, give their salespeople a big budget to go out and take people out to dinner is yeah. because it's not sold by telling you I do A, B, and C. Contracts are sold by us connecting and having fun together and engaging together and getting to know each other's lives and creating stories and memories and relaying memories that we now know about each other. Um, that's, that's that trust that happens. And people don't do that enough because of online business. We think that it's, I've got to push the thing and sell them through my funnel. And all those things are important elements because if you build a relationship and then you have nothing for them to actually buy, then you're missing, <laughs> missing that part. But people build the stuff, but then never build relationships and why, wonder why nobody ever buys their stuff. Mm -hmm. So it has to be this coupling of build relationships, really connect and be, that's what we talk a lot about being yourself. Like, hey, be yourself. And that's not because, you know, oh, being yourself has some, advent, you know, some advantageous thing to just selling your products. Being yourself is because the people that connect to who you are, you're more likely to have fun jokes together and hang out together. And then those are people who are going to share you and get excited about you. So being yourself is is a marketing tactic <laughs> that people yeah. don't use enough. Yeah, no, absolutely. And like like you said, life is so is so short. Then why should we we should surround ourselves with people that we love and have an amazing time with and have a ball because that's going to make it a lot more fun. And I you know. you just had your first um, a boss mum retreat as well, didn't you? That sounded a blast. I did. Yeah. Well, and I love a good party. If you haven't noticed that about me. I enjoy having fun. I, I think laughter is kind of like exercise. So <laughs> I like to do it often. Good. Um, yeah. And I love, I love to sing. So we had karaoke and I also believe that karaoke, <laughs> interestingly that I tried to explain this to women. I was like, I didn't just put karaoke at this retreat because I like karaoke, although I do. Um, I did it because when you stand up on stage and you're using somebody else's words, it sort of kills that fear of being up on stage, of talking, of connecting. And so it's a really good, easy conduit to help you to become better at being a business person. And I think, I think it's one of those like easy entry points to going, oh my gosh, I got up on stage and I sang in front of everybody and it was totally fun. And I danced and I was strange and quirky in myself and everybody had a blast. Okay. I could do that next time and maybe do something that's, that's my own. And so it, to me, it's this gateway drug 
to, to being an, an entrepreneur. Karaoke is a total entrepreneur gateway drug. And so we, uh, yeah, we have karaoke wow. and we had raffles and it was the more you engage, the more raffle tickets you get. And we have, um, we had facilitators at each table. We had yoga, we had, so to me, it was all these different ways to foster creativity in ourselves and a lot of working on not talking to people, but giving them just the little bit they need to open up and then allowing them to discuss and connect and grow in that way. And we had 80% of the women that attended said that they had uh, built uh, relationships that brought them business um, that they directly connected to that relationship within like the first 30 days. Fantastic. Um, I had people boxering me saying like, Dana, um, like I actually got clients like from your retreat. Like I actually had people buy my courses. I actually, you know, which is exactly what I wanted is I, I don't need to hoard business. There's totally enough business for everybody. Um, and I had, and I filled all my programs and everybody else filled all their programs. And they were all in ways that were things people actually needed. You know, it wasn't like, oh, I'm just going to try and sell people into something as many as I can. It was like, let's find the right fit for everybody because either at some point I will be the right fit or um, I've connected other people enough that when they see somebody that's the right fit, they're going to bring them to me. So my my plan is not to be the center, but to create a really lovely web um, that helps lead things to everybody. So it's it's all very flowing. And that's what's so lovely. It's the community, basically. And if you spot an opportunity for somebody that doesn't work for you or, you know, vice versa, you can just, I love that about our ATL community. It's exactly the same, you know, everyone's supporting one another. And I think it's okay. like everybody should have a boss mom community or community that serves them and works for them. Yeah, absolutely. Find something where people aren't scared to say who's helping them. Right. Like if you I feel like if you get into a community and people want to don't want to tell you who their coach is or don't want to tell you who's helped them build that thing because they feel like they it needs to be their thing. Like I, I think the the people that believe that if anybody helped them, then it wasn't really theirs. Um, that's the community that's hard to like hard to connect with. Because I think that when you get with people who go, Oh my gosh, let me tell you the, the people that I had that made this possible, but still feel like it's theirs if they have ownership in it. Because it was their idea and they had, you know, it's, it was their journey that they've just brought, had people help them along with. Like, I feel like that's the best space because those are going to be the people that want to connect you. And those are going to be people that want to talk about you. Um, and those are going to be people that are, um, are, are really sort of generous with their resources with you. Uh, and then the only thing we have to teach everybody from a business standpoint is how to be uh, generous with your resources, but really protective of your time. Uh, because I think as online entrepreneurs, we go, oh my gosh, well, I'm just going to go out and help everybody. And in helping everybody, I'm going to grow my business. But they forget that if you help everybody 100% of the time, you have no time to actually work on your business. And therefore, you have nothing to give them to help them with <laughs> when it comes time for them to pay you or no time to have clients. And then, and then, it, and then you're just out being doing really great charity work, but not actually running a business that makes revenue. Thank you so much for listening to Kitty Talks. Be sure to head over to our kittytalks.com website, become a member of our exclusive club, and you'll get free interviews and access to our private Facebook group, exclusive webinars, and secret success interviews. See you there.